Good morning and welcome to our discussion of Chrysler and BMW's TriTech Engine joint venture. I'll be presenting on behalf of Team 3, which is Andrew, Chris, and myself, Lindsay. So quickly we'll overview our agenda for the day. We'll start with a broad overview of the project. We'll move into a more detailed review of the project charter, look at the stakeholder register and the key players involved, the project update uh, at a critical juncture in the project, discuss what went wrong with the project, what went right, what we do next, uh, and what we do differently if we could start things all over. So first, the particulars of the project. The key players involved are Chrysler and BMW, uh, and they entered into this joint venture in January 1997. So what was the joint venture? It was named TriTech, and it was a $525, total, uh, $525 million total investment split 50-50 between the two parties. Uh, and that aspect of it is key, which we'll get into later, um, the fact that the costs were split completely evenly between the two parties. And the initiative was to build a plant and manufa manufacture a family of engines um, they were called the uh, small family of engines, which is classified as the 1 to 1.6 liter. Um, Chrysler had been researching the, uh, the opportunity to build and manufacture a small family of small engines, and BMW was eventually selected as the partner to help them do that. The project was initiated in January of 1997, though Chrysler had been researching this endeavor for some 18 months before the project actually started, um, and it was slated to run through December 2000, which was when the plant was to be up to full capacity uh, production of 400,000 400, engines per year. They selected the location of Campo Largo, Brazil, uh, as where the plant would be built and the engines manufactured. Uh, there was uh, a lot of emerging opportunities in this market, a lot of room for growth, so that made it an ideal choice in their eyes. And why did they go about this endeavor? So they could definitely save money, and they being Chrysler, they could save money by doing this venture as a partnership. Um, it was prohibitively too expensive to do it alone. They could reduce their costs by at least 50% by having a partner involved. They could gain a foothold in, again, as I mentioned, an emerging market, which was South America and Brazil specifically. Um, they also looked into Asia, but uh, eventually went with the South American market. And it was an important foothold as Chrysler um, eventually opened other plants to manufacture other vehicles, such as the Dodge Dakota pickup. And it also matched with Chrysler's strategic goals, specifically the uh, COS or Chrysler operating system, which was their approach to manufacturing, um, and so it was in alignment with that and made good sense. So now we'll look at the charter in more detail, and it's important to note that this project in reality did not have a charter, uh, so this was all the charter that our team developed throughout our analysis of the case study over the term. So the business requirements we've talked a little bit about already, develop a new family of 1.6 liter engines. Uh, and build a 400,000 400, unit per year capacity plant to manufacture them in. And the goal was really to have a low cost, high quality product. Some assumptions with the project. The budget was to be approved annually as it was a uh, multi-year project. Volume delivery, so that total capacity of 400,000 units was to be delivered by December of the year 2000. Assuming there's continued market demand in the space, um, very important there. And a stable Brazilian economy and environment in which to operate. Some constraints. The joint venture itself was definitely a constraint because of the way they set it up. So decisions um, required collaboration. They couldn't be a unil unilateral thing. And in this particular project, important decisions were subject to the unanimous approval of a steering committee. It was made up of members of both BMW and Chrysler. So this setup certainly made things more difficult, um, slower to accomplish things. The plant layout and requirements were dependent on the engine design, so that was a constraint. Um, that means that the engine design has to be on par and solidified and uh, 
the plant layout depends upon it, so any delays in the engine design are going to delay subsequent phases like the plant layout. Same for procurement. That was also relying upon the engine design, so if that first step of the engine design got off kilter, it would affect other things along the way. Risk. The joint venture itself was also a risk, as at any point in time, one of the parties could walk away, and that would be um, a critical misstep for the project as they split the funding 50-50, so it would be really hard to lose half of the funding if you're the remaining party. Schedule delays are also always a risk. Uh, they had a, a deadline to meet, and anything that took that off pace was bad for the project. There could be changes in market demand, either... Um, less demand or more demand that would uh, they'd be unable to meet. And any issues with the environment, such as weather, um, political instability within a foreign country, anything like that. So the final deliverable, as we've talked about, was a building a plant that had an output of 400,000 units annually. The stakeholder register. So the key player here is the project manager, Jack Smith. He uh, was basically mandated to start a business. So quite a large endeavor, he was involved in all facets of the project. The project sponsors, um, as we noted them in the charter that we developed, but again, no charter actually existed, uh, were those two representatives, uh, Francois and Dr. Reitzel from Chrysler and BMW respectively. There was the steering committee that I mentioned. Um, it, had, it had both of our project sponsors as well as two other members from the BMW team, and two other members from Chrysler, totaling six uh, in total. Some other key important players. So Frank, who was the Advanced Manufacturing Vice President at Chrysler, he had a key stake in um, really directing things um, above Jack Smith and an investment in making sure the stalemate, which is the critical point in the project that we'll talk about later, um, was resolved. David Ludlow was the platform executive. He was really instrumental in the research that Chrysler did prior to actually engaging in this venture. Um, in 1995 and 1996, did a lot of that research to really get the ball rolling. And he actually did some preliminary hiring of designers and engineers before Jack Smith came on as project manager. So then we have other representatives from really the key segments of the business that had a stake in this project. So a representative from engineering, from finance, sales and marketing, procurement, and quality management. These are all groups that, um, that had a, a claim in what was going on and their work was really affected by this project on the whole. And of course there were many other people involved um, from these departments, but these people are just meant to be representative of those departments as a whole. There's also some others to consider. Um, the construction workers who built the plant and were employed as a result of this project, the customers who will eventually purchase the vehicles that these engines reside in, and the Brazilians themselves. There um, possibly could have been some adverse effects to them, possibly perhaps they were displaced by the building of the plant, things like that to consider. So the critical point in time that we uh, delivered our project update was early September of 1997, and uh, we chose this moment in time at, to be one of the quarterly meetings that Jack Smith, the project manager, would deliver to that steering committee. Um, because he would he held quarterly meetings with them to keep them updated on the project. So at this point in time, they've begun um, design of the engine, but they've reached a stalemate between the engineers who design and the advanced manufacturers who will actually manufacture the product. Um, they've just broken ground on the facility, so it's very important to keep the design and manufacturing parts rolling because they are now building a plant that's going to actually manufacture these goods and um, there are catastrophic consequences to the schedule if those things don't keep rolling. So at this point in time, initiating and planning are nearly complete. Um, there's a bit of a delay in the schedule because they've had a delay in hiring design staff, but that is now complete. Um, so the stalemate that's happening is the engineers believe that their design is top-notch and it will reduce the risk of oil leaks. On the other hand, manufacturing does not think this design 
is going to be appropriate for high volume production. So um, thus the argument and the two sides are, are really stalled out and Jack Smith needs to make a decision or decide how they're going to make the decision to break the stalemate. So he's decided to make a task force of senior management and David Ludlow is heading that task force and they um, have been asked to resolve the dispute. Quick note on budget at this point in time as well. Uh, it's slightly overdue, but the contingency is still intact. Um, but again, if the stalemate isn't broken and they don't keep moving things along, um, the budget and the schedule are at risk of spir spiraling out of control. So what went wrong on this project? As previously mentioned, there was no charter whatsoever. Um, a charter has been explained, to me at least before, as being kind of like a birth certificate for a project. So it's pretty crazy to think that um, a huge endeavor like this, that's hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, proceeded with no charter whatsoever. The project was also pretty overambitious in many ways. Um, it, it encompassed in its entirety research and development, de designing the engine, manufacturing it, building the plant, and taking it to market. Um, each of those things really could have been its own project, but everything altogether was one. So uh, it may have behooved the team to break things up into smaller chunks. There was also kind of an inexperienced PM in Jack Smith. Um, he had limited experience running large, complex operations. He even said to himself, to Chrysler exec executives, are you sure I'm the right person for this job? Um, so that's, you know, a bit alarming, and uh, there maybe could have been a better choice for the PM. As mentioned before, they were also slow to staff the advanced manufacturing engineers, and the, the key problem with this is that the design engineers were staffed first and began design without any input from, from the manufacturers. So it uh, moved forward and then got to a point where the design was pretty far along, but um, the manufacturers weighed in and had a problem with it. So if they'd all been able to collaborate earlier, that perhaps could have been avoided. There was also an overabundance of meetings. Jack Smith was um, very prone to those. There were 90-minute weekly status meetings twice a week. There were town halls monthly that could last upwards of six hours, um, and that was something that the, the team members definitely took note of that they felt like they were in meetings all the time and not actually doing the work. There were disagreements between BMW and Chrysler engineers. They kind of had different philosophies. BMW engineers were used to kind of being the kings and the manufacturers didn't question their designs. They just did it. Uh, whereas at, Chry at Chrysler, manufacturing engineers would frequently push back on the product designers um, and so BMW engineers weren't used to that, and there was a bit of a tussle between those two groups. And of course, the overarching disagreement between the engineers generally on this project and advanced, advanced manufacturing and the stalemate that ensued. So some things did go right on this project, though. Jack Smith had a, a very positive management philosophy. He, in general, was very communicative had an open-door policy, and believed in being trustworthy, sincere, and reliable. He uh, was self-described as open and results-oriented. So th those are definitely positive traits to have in a project manager, um, certainly other philosophies that are a lot less successful. So that was definitely a mark in the plus column for this project. There was also the TriTech contract book which was an attempt by Jack Smith, um, after the fact, of course, but at developing a, a sort of charter. The TriTech contract book was signed by every team member, and it was a document that specified the measurable objectives of the project, the processes used to achieve them, and meant to help the team members understand and agree on the overall strategy. So we had a, a, a document that really aligned everyone, and uh, it also contained a mission statement so it really brought things together as best as he could without having a, an official charter to work off of. The assessment tools used on this project were also noteworthy. Um, they had several tools, but one of them being the 12 panel chart, uh, which summarized the key program objectives and tracked their status. And I'm sorry, I skipped one. They also had co-located teams uh, with the exception of, unfortunately, advanced manufacturing. So co-located teams definitely make for better collaboration. 
It allows personalities to mesh and team members to really build a rapport with each other. Um, however, the benefits could only be so much without this really key group being able to co-locate. And the reason they couldn't co-locate was that there were union laws uh, restricting those advanced manufacturing staff members from being on Chrysler property. However, the engines did eventually make it into production. So in, in that facet, you can really say that that went right for this project. So the, you know, the project didn't eventually get scrapped. Um, it wasn't a complete failure because they did eventually manufacture the engines. And like you can see on the photo here, um, some of them went into Mini Coopers from BMW. So they, they did make it to market eventually. So what we do next, um, and our case study left us at the point of Jack Smith being faced with this dilemma and how should he solve it? How should he go about making the decision to break this stalemate? So we really picked it up from that point and said, what would we do next if we were the PM? So we would do uh, like what we described in our project update. We would create the senior management committee um, and engage them to break the stalemate. Uh, we would communicate the decision in an open and honest way, the same way that Jack Smith had been running the project all along, um, be transparent about it um, to the other project team members. Reduce the number of meetings and the overall duration of those meetings, as people have been commenting on that within the project, that it's, um, it seems to waste time and they'd rather be spending time doing the work rather than talking about it. Bring the rest of the team to advanced manufacturing so that you can have the whole team co-located. So obviously there were union laws restricting advanced manufacturing from being in the Chrysler building with everyone else, but is there a way that you could bring everyone else to advanced manufacturing and get the full benefit of co-locating? So we would want to find a way to do that. And finally, we delegate major project components to junior project managers. So Jack Smith would still be the main senior project manager, but he'd delegate and divvy up some of those other parts that we talked about um, as being so ambitious, break them down, get specific people to lead those parts, um, and let him focus on a high level thing and not uh, all these overwhelming bits. So there's also, what would we have done differently if we could have been on this project from the start? So perhaps a different partner. Um, we talked a little bit about some of just the differing philosophies that BMW and Chrysler had, um, and they seem to have kind of opposite goals for this project. BMW wanted to learn how to manufacture a small engine, whereas Chrysler wanted to learn um, more of the European style of testing and manufacturing and they were definitely opposite goals, they kind of each had what the other wanted, but I don't know that they were similar enough that they made really the best partners for each other. So perhaps we would have chosen a different partner. Perhaps we would have gone at it with no partner at all. Um, in 2007, Chrysler ended up completely buying out BMW and obtaining 100% ownership of the whole project. So uh, it, it in, in all actuality, it wasn't all that long of a partnership, so perhaps Chrysler should have just gone about it um, on their own to begin with. And there's also the consideration, which um, we are pretty in line with, would be our final recommendation if we could do it all differently, is we would maybe not um, go about this project at all. Um, after Chrysler received 100 or obtained 100% ownership when they bought BMW out in 2007, they considered selling off the business to a third party altogether, um, and eventually they ceased all production. So in just a span of a few short years after the Endeavor went live, um, it was completely shut down and, and no longer exists. So that begs the question, why was there a project to begin with? Um, and at the very least, we definitely would have done some things differently um, if the project had gone forward as it had. We would have definitely made sure there was a charter. That's absolutely a fact. Uh, we would have perhaps selected a different PM who wasn't so reluctant and inexperienced. We think there was a better choice than Jack Smith. And there was no analysis of Brazil as a location in all actuality, so we would have taken the time to do that analysis and really make sure that Brazil was the right choice. Um, they were also considering the Asian market at the time, so we would have done some further exploration into that and perhaps made a different choice other than Brazil. 
So that concludes our presentation of the TriTech joint venture between Chrysler and BMW. Thank you for your time and have a great day.